All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an impulse response on the HX effects and have that go out of the line output of the Quilter Inner Block 45. All right, I'm Dr. McFarland, and this channel is all about gear and how you can use it in a live situation or even in the studio. And it took me a little bit to figure this out, but I think I, uh, I think I got it whipped here. So what I'm doing, I am using the balance line out going to an FRFR powered speaker from Headrush. And I'm using the HX effects as my impulse response and all my other effects. So I think I found a way that sounds pretty good. I'm still running four cable method into the inner block 45. And then um, if you go to my signal flow here, you can see the last block in the chain is my impulse response. So what's happening is everything from effects two back is going into the effects loop of the amp and everything before effects loop two is going to the input of the amp. And since the impulse response is last in the chain, that is in the effects loop and then is being sent out from the line output of the quilter into a mixing board, a powered speaker, whatever you want. Now keep this in mind, this speaker out right here only goes to a non-powered speaker or a guitar cabinet, all right? You do not want to plug the speaker only output into a powered speaker. Something is gonna blow up and it's not gonna be good. So only plug the speaker only into a guitar cab, okay? All right, so with that out of the way, let me show you what I've done here. So I have my impulse response. If I touch on the switch it's going to show up all the different parameters all right so i have ir select so i can go in here and the first one i have is an sm57 and this is based on the uh this is a marshall 1960 cab uh, i can't remember the exact speaker it is but let me turn it off and you can hear what the inner block sounds like when there's no impulse response in the chain It's not too bad when you have it fairly clean. But it's still just kind of... Signals without an impulse response has this very dirty, kind of glitchy kind of sound to it. Almost like digital distortion. It's kind of weird sound, but... And it's even worse when you add gain to the overall signal. All right, it's just not a very pleasing sound. So what the impulse response does is it just completes that signal path of guitar, amplifier, and then speaker, okay? So if I kick this on, now you can hear a very full, nice guitar sound. Okay, here it is with it off. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> Here it is with it on. All right, this is awesome because I thought I was going to have to get a separate like little like mover pedal or like the radar pedal that you can load impulse responses and use that as an output. But now that I figured out that you can just have the HX effects and the inner block all in one, it's going to be pretty amazing. So... All right, so let's select a different impulse response. We can go in here. I have an M160 microphone. And then I have the... Uh, it's a Royer 121. And then I have an MD 421. 
So you can hear that each microphone has its own distinct characteristic. This is more important when you have the gain up pretty high, so... Otherwise, everything just sounds way too glitchy. Here it is with it off. Yeah, it's just not a very good sound. All right, so let's incorporate some of these other effects in here. Let's turn on the octo. Let's clean up the signal a little bit. delay all right how about we put on a little bit of overdrive all right let's put on some uh, top secret OD some uh, auto volume echo so none of this would sound correct at all if I didn't have the effects loop on and I didn't have the IR in place okay let's actually turn Turn the kinking comp off. Okay, that sounds really good. All right, so let's go back to our impulse response and let's look at some of the other parameters here. So we have a low cut, which I have mine set to around. You can, you can start off at 80 hertz. Just keep rolling it up until you hear the sound thin out a little bit and then roll it back and that should be pretty good. Because with a guitar, you don't want like tons of low end because you got a kick drum and a bass in the band to compete with. So there's no point in having tons of low end there. And then as far as the high cut, you do want to roll some of that off just so that way you don't have a lot of piercing sounds coming out. And it does just help smooth out the sound a little bit. Turn on the double tank. Now, if we want to assign the uh, impulse response to an actual switch, we can just say, we can just turn this knob here and say, let's put it on foot switch six. Okay, and we'll press save. So now it shows up on foot switch six and I can access it a little bit quicker if I need to. But for the most part, for me, like compression Maybe like an always on reverb and then an impulse response. You know, I don't necessarily need these on a switch because they're always going to be on. So now you can hook a speaker up to a cab. But the only problem is you're still getting the impulse response sound uh, to that speaker. So... Unless you press FR, then... Yeah, at that point, you're kind of having two speakers on at the same time. You have the physical speaker, then you have the impulse response. And I normally don't like that. So, for me, I would probably either choose one or the other if I'm going to show up to a gig and be like, all right, I'm just going to use a real cab tonight. Then I can. I can just hook a speaker up to that. Or if I want to use a powered speaker, like go directly to a mixer or something, I can just do that and then have the sound guy push some volume up through my wedge on stage. That way I can hear myself. And I basically have a silent stage with everything that I need to have the four cable method and a direct line out with an impulse response. So it's a really great setup. Mm -hmm. 
It's going to work the same if you have headphones plugged in as well. So you can get a nice sound, uh, whether you're traveling with this kind of setup and you just need something to plug into at night to practice, you know, without having to bug a bunch of other people. Um, that's a great option as well. So, all right, this has been Dr. McFarland uh, showing you how to set up a four cable method and impulse response using the HX effects. I think it's going to be a really cool rig. Stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell icon so you'll be notified every time I release new content. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Keep rocking. So why do people call me Dr. McFarland? Because I heal people with sweet rock and roll.